I'd say there's a number of different roles that a physician might play in the uh, research laboratories. Some might be just consultants and helping people uh, within the labs to learn techniques or approaches that might be uh, typical clinical approaches that are not oftentimes used in the laboratories. It may be simply ser serving on a grant as a consultant so there's a better translational aspect to the work. In other words, how does basic research being done in the laboratory transfer to the actual uh, what, what might be helpful for patients? Um, I know some physicians are also doing much more uh, active roles, including things such as placing arterial catheters in subjects, um, helping with uh, diagnostic tests that may be part of a screening procedure for some of the subjects. Uh, there's a wide range of what they do, and I would say it, most of the labs have some very active collaborations with a physician that will, will go across many different fronts. So I work with students as an uh, advisor, as a pre-med advisor. We constantly, I, there's not a week that goes by in my clinic and in, in my office practice where we don't have one or two students from all sorts of different levels. The other aspect that I do is, besides advising and having students observe, is, right is teaching. Mm -hmm. But probably the most fun, the most enjoyable, is actually the introductory level class because those are the students that don't know anything about medicine or anything about physiology and they come in and they um, they're just amazed by it. Um, and the best part, okay, the most enjoyable part is when you have a doctor's kid that's taking it and they go back and they tell their mother or their father, I didn't know there were two parts to the lungs or I didn't know that the heart goes both ways. I've always been looking for research opportunities and, uh, since I left NIH and there are some here in Oregon. I, I work at OHSU. I've done some papers with Vern, of course. Vern's been a good source. But then when Ron Stock um, said that there's this new guy coming on campus, this new phys physiologist, who's specifically looking at BPD patients, and it was a chance to do research again, which was really cool. Um, so I just started showing up at Andy's lab, and Andy was kind enough to let me come and work some of the equipment and talk with some of the students. and take some of the students, grad students and the under, undergrads, and show them the nursery and see the kids that they were starting with. Turns out one of the grad students was actually a 25-weeker set of twins at San Francisco, one of the first humans to receive surfactant. At that time, one of the few things we could do for respiratory distress besides just forcing air into the kids' lungs. And this grad student was running the big portion of the lab. Andy was, of course, providing the oversight, but this grad student was doing the nitty-gritty, checking the blood gases, running the, running the, uh, the respiratory computer, uh, putting people on, uh, on the bicycles, and he was training the other grad students. Um, so to hear his story was really inspiring, and to see his motivation to do this, but also to see his face when he could see these teeny babies you know, how small he was. He'd never had a chance to do that before. So to be part of that was, was really incredible. To me, working uh, with uh, an academic department is part of what it means to be a, f a good physician. Because you're constantly challenging what you're thinking. You're, if you're teaching, then you have to re-look at everything you know, all your principles, all of the content, all of the um, basic tenets of the physiology of, of what we do in medicine is basically physiology applied and you always have to relearn it and you have to learn it on the basic level and that, that it really helps to teach it because you're constantly reviewing that so it makes me a better doctor plus it's a lot of fun. And it's the, the, the ability or the, the opportunity to to study uh, or ask questions, look into questions of interest. It's not uh, in, in medical practice, sometimes it's the, the questions are posed to you. They're not questions you necessarily want to ask all the time. Whereas in research, uh, in, you can try to ask questions that, that uh, you find fascinating. From my perspective, uh, when uh, practicing medicine in the community, uh, it becomes much of the same thing. You get an interesting case here or there, but much of it is along the lines of things you've seen before. And the people are interesting, but the diagnosis remain the same. And the chance to collaborate with uh, a professor on research is a chance to ask interesting questions and try to find the answers. 
just in terms of the relationships that our students can have and that we can have with these clinicians, um, one of my doctoral students did research, conducted her dissertation research in um, the Peace Health um, offices because of this collaboration. Um, we've had master students who've actually gone in and helped in the office and they've got that real, that sense of what it's like to really be doing developmental screening. Um, we've had students who speak um, in like Spanish or Vietnamese who've gone in and helped translate. Um, so the, it has been a rich environment, I think, for our students. We have very little um, opportunity unless we create the opportunities to come across the, what the physicians are doing and for them to come across what we're doing. Uh, if there was a potential for us to be um, more co-localized, I think that would be a huge benefit for the collaborations we've set up. It's easy for me because I have always been involved with academics, but it is crucial for the, for the great majority of physicians and the great majority of um, academicians and, and professors to have a formal base of interaction. Nobody's going to be able to take the time or the energy to go out and find what's going on. And if we don't have a structure, there's no way that that's going to exist. And because, as, as we all know, medicine is changing so much, if we don't have an easy structure that facilitates that interaction, both in how to do things and in what is going on, uh, then the distance between the university and the medicine, uh, departments of medicine and the hospital is going to go further and further apart. You know, I think knowing that there were certain physicians that were interested and that that was really something that um, the physician world valued and encouraged, I think would help and make it easier for us to approach people. Um, you know, having maybe statistical, um, that kind of support for the, for the pediatricians. Um, you know, we can usually find it, but I know that, um, that a lot of the pediatricians we worked with would love to do some things on their own, but they don't really have that research expertise. So if they had some more support, that would be something that we could more easily help them. To help facilitate it, we need, we need more on stocks. Uh, we need more presentations to the medical staff. Um, we need more facilities where we can have the groups come together, the clinical and the scientific um, forums where they can talk, spaces. Just having a space to sit down and talk was incredibly difficult at the start. We had to steal from other departments. We had to use some, we had, uh, we were in the law library at one point trying to get something done. Um, just having a facility to be able to exchange ideas uh, of course, the equipment to support that, uh, the chalk blackboards, uh, PowerPoints. Um, also having some of the lab facilities available, not just for the scientists, but for some of the people who might have an idea. What, I, what we need are resources, I think. Um, uh, we need uh, uh, the ability to think big and then say, hey, we can do that, as opposed to, oh, wouldn't it be great we could do this, but... Huh. That's, that's not going to happen. Uh, and I think once you have ideas that can be made real, you'll be able to bring in more people. And that's sort of really my dream as well, is to bring in just a whole team of people from a lot of different areas and ask really big questions and come up with equally big answers. To me, that would be the most amazing thing.